Hello my artistic friends and welcome to Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to be teaching on how to sketch with pastels. Yes, actually using these hard new pastels by Prismacolor using some willow charcoal or vine charcoal, a blending stump, boy that one's dirty, you can actually clean these with sandpaper, and a kneaded eraser which is, I need to buy a new kneaded eraser, this one's really dirty. And over there you see a, a soft pastel laying down, it's a dark Terry Ludwig pastel. I'm going to be using a reference image from an app I love called the Sketchy app. And um, I, you can get it on your phone and your iPad. I don't think you can access it via computer, but I use this app to find faces to draw or sketch or paint. And uh, it's really fun. This is a pastel I did. You can see the soft pastels there. Uh, this is one I did with some soft pastels just on drawing paper. And recently I've started actually using these new pastels just a sketch in a sketchbook on a regular uh, sketch paper. And I've really been enjoying um, the results of this. So I'm gonna share a little bit about how I do that. Someone asked for me to share this. And uh, so I'm gonna get started and I'll give some commentary along the way and hopefully we'll all learn something new. All right, so now you can see that I'm actually just using this vine charcoal and I am basically you're gonna see I'm doing a lot of measuring when doing faces and even of animals or people it's crucial to get proportions right otherwise it's gonna look amateurish and uh, not professional so as you can see I'm just using this fine charcoal the great thing about it is it rubs off almost with your finger easily so if you make a mistake you're not left with a dark mark there um, that you can't get rid of and uh, so I just occasionally use a kneaded eraser to kind of adjust and um, continually measuring and checking. And what I do is uh, at the beginning, I was just kind of checking the composition. Where do I want her face to appear on this uh, piece of sketch paper? As you can see, the sketch paper is of a uh, vertical format, like a portrait layout. Uh, it's taller than it is wide. But the photo, the reference photo, is like a perfect square. So, you know, one of the first things you want to do is kind of get an idea of where is this going to be the best visually, the most pleasing visually. Um, so again, I was uh, making sure I got that right now. I am basically getting um, some points in where I know I'm going to have some reference points to refer back to. Right now, I'm checking the eye and seeing where that should be in relation to the face, uh, that, that left side of the face. And so I'm just kind of getting it in lightly. And often these things change. I erase and move quite a bit before I get the original uh, or the foundational sketch in there. So again, just making some measurements. Uh, later you'll see that I actually, I realized that I had the, the side of the face in too close to her eye, that left side. The ear is much further back than I have drawn it right here so far, and I adjust that and fix it later. So again, just measuring. You see me there using actually the piece of charcoal to kind of make some measurements to see where does her eye fall in relation to the width of her head and measuring is the right eye higher or lower than the left eye. So all these little things, they seem to be quite tedious, but again, they're very crucial if you're going to get a good drawing to start with. Again, more measurements, and you can see I've, I've sped this up a little bit, otherwise it would have taken forever. <laughs> um, and I notice too, when I'm drawing, I always look at the shapes, not what the thing is. In other words, to me, that's not an eye I'm drawing, it's a shape. So I'm looking at what is it shaped like, and the reason this helps is because we have a tendency to draw what we think we see instead of what we see. That was a lesson I learned in a, a just a little art class I had in college um, as an elective class. Um, I majored in graphic design, so I had a few little art classes. And uh, the, the lesson is, was uh, one of the main things the teacher taught was draw what you see, not what you think you see. In our mind, we say, oh, these are lips. And we think we know what lips look like, but don't do that. <laughs> Continually look back at your reference image and analyze what is the shape, forget that it's a mouth, <laughs> and just start drawing and measuring and making sure you get that shape right. I happen to notice, um, to me, the shape of her face, you see how it's kind of uh, that whole yellowish, orangey part of her face. To me, that shape looked kind of like a, like a guitar pick, if you know what a guitar pick is. And so, you know, my brain just kind of has learned 
to operate that way the more that I've been sketching. And uh, I've really been enjoying sketching lately. Um, I think it is a foundation to good art. There are some people who say, you know, you don't have to be able to draw to be able to paint, but I disagree with that. I actually heard uh, artist Marla Baguetta talk about that uh, in one of her YouTube lessons the other day about having good drawing skills. It really is crucial. Um, now again, I'm doing the ear here and uh, I realize later I, I move it back even further um, because I realize it's not quite right. So now just uh, enjoy this sketch process. Uh, try to make note of how I'm measuring and um, how I'm just making general marks to get this in. Nothing overly detailed. Um, just really trying to get in a good drawing before I start adding the pastels. All right, enjoy. I have my general drawing in I'm, I'm going to start adding the pastels now again these are Prismacolor new pastels spelled in you pastels not in EW and uh, I am getting the mood in right now with uh, the values I happen to really like how this photograph had that golden um, feel to the background some of the background and uh, her face and notice the right side of her face from our perspective. Um, I think sometimes, again, just like you analyze drawing and shapes, you draw what you see, not what you think you see. Paint what you see and not what you think you see. If you were to analyze that right side of her face, it is quite dark and it's pretty reddish, pinkish, reddish, brownish. And uh, so I'm establishing these values um, to kind of give that mood and also to, to build some depth. You know, as with any painting, it begins starting out uh, a little flat looking until you start layering those values and uh, getting the, the colors in that will accentuate depth and, uh, and distance and uh, contour. So uh, again, I'm just using these um, warm tones right now to kind of establish that mood. And I, <laughs> it's funny, and <clears throat> sometimes I will draw the eyes first or paint them first and here lately I'm drawing them last, so she looks a little like a zombie right now, but <laughs> I think it's because, you know, those are uh, kind of fine detail work, and um, these pastels, the good thing about the new pastels is you can get fine detail work better than you can with some of the chunkier, soft pastels. For one, they're harder, and uh, that makes you able to have a fine line better. And another is I break them a lot, and you sometimes can get a nice little corner to them. So uh, I use those corners later to get those eyes in there and, um, and get them uh, correct. So she's going to be a zombie for a while until I finish. <laughs> now what I also do, notice I use the blending stump there a little bit to kind of blend in. Also notice how I like to create color harmony. Um, even though her hair, if you look at the reference photo, doesn't have a whole lot of red and orange and that, um, that uh, beautiful magenta color in it, I want to establish that and uh, work it throughout the painting. It gives it harmony and uh, makes it more interesting. Now I'm using that dark right there. It was a dark uh, Terry Ludwig that's called the eggplant color. It looks like it's black. It's actually a dark, dark purple. But that again is to help me establish the values. Um, I don't want to get too tedious on one area until I kind of get an overall value going for the entire painting. And uh, that way you don't um, get your... Uh, values or your colors incorrect. It helps a lot. So uh, I don't usually use a white, but I did that there just to get that little highlight over her lip uh, because I had lost it a little bit. So um, so again, just uh, enjoy. Oh, I want to make a tip here too. One little neat thing I learned when I, I didn't always do portraiture. Um, I used to love landscapes more and the more I did it, I think I didn't like it because I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> and the more I did it, the it was challenging and it was hard but the more I started to like it. And I learned some neat uh, tricks about portraiture. Um, one thing is that with the mouth, almost always the top lip is darker than the bottom lip. The top lip, uh, if the light is coming from above, almost always it's gonna have a shadow on it. So you wanna make sure you get that lip darker and the bottom lip, because it sticks out, um, is going to have a highlight on it. It's gonna be lighter. So that's just a, 
a little trick about, um, or a tip, I should say, about um, getting uh, facial um, details in correctly. And again, more measuring, more working. Uh, so again, here we go and just enjoy the rest of this and I'll pop in in a little while. Now here you can see I'm finally getting rid of the zombie look. <laughs> I'm just using a pencil because I could get a finer point on it to get in the uh, like the iris and the pupil part of her eye. Um, I, I grabbed a purple there because that just really added some oomph to that, uh, that uh, beautiful colors that we have going on there. And uh, I'm going to start working on the eye in just a bit here and I wanted to point out that even from the reference photo, even though you can't really see the color of her eye, it looks like her eye is like brown. It actually looks almost to me like it's a deep, deep blue um, from, from what I can see um, better than you can see on this video. And uh, so I want to get in that, that deep blue and um, uh, just give it the kind of that mood that really just, I don't know, it just set a, a neat look to her face there. And also I wanted to reiterate something, you know, I said paint what you see not what you think you see. I wanted to just uh, uh, make sure I make a comment on the fact that that has to do more with value than with color because I often, if you've watched much of my work or many of my videos, you probably have noticed I change the colors a lot from the reference photo. I didn't as much in this one. I used the, the general idea of these colors. But the wonderful thing is that if you get value right, meaning the lightness or the darkness of a color, you can get really creative with color as long as you have the value the same. You know, you could use a, a purple when it really is more of a, a, a gray of the same value. Or uh, if the scene is more green and grassy, you can change that to pink or orange or whatever as long as those values are correct and of the same uh, lightness or darkness. So anyway, she's coming along now, and I'm, I'm really, I enjoyed this one. I was literally just sitting at my dining room table when I was doing this. I had moved all of my art stuff in there, and uh, my husband was watching a movie, and I wasn't real into it. <laughs> I was more into the sketching, so, uh, so I was having fun. So, um, and now again, I'm, uh, things too, like, uh, like that ear. Uh, ears, are, I'm not a fan of doing ears, but the great thing is you don't have to put a lot of detail in an ear. <laughs> if you do, it almost draws the eye um, away from the other elements that you really would rather focus on, like the eyes and things. So anyway, uh, finishing this one up here, and uh, this one has really been fun. Mm -hmm. 